You're listening to Panthers on Tap. I'm Curtis Round, joined by Bryson Carbley. We're just two fans sharing our love for the game in Carolina Panthers football. So join us, crack open a cold one, some bubbly, a little wine, some scotch. We don't care, whatever makes you sleep better at night. Before we dive into the episode, a little self-promotion. Stop what you're doing. Go give us a follow on Twitter at Panthers on Tap. Join the discussion on our Facebook group. We have over 2,500 members. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcast. Just search Panthers on Tap. We are in the final week of preseason, just a little more than two weeks away from the home opener in Atlanta. We just got our tickets today for that game. Bryson, you excited? Super excited. I'm ready to see Bryce Young's game one in the NFL. Hopefully start off on a good foot and and, and take the Dirty Birds in Atlanta for uh, the first time since we've been down there. Yeah, I'm, I'm – I mean, I've – don't think I've been – no, I haven't been to a Falcons game yet. I've been to a one-away game up at Lambeau, so I'm really excited. I'm hoping they come away with a victory. Uh, we got a special guest with us tonight. Uh, he goes by Little Rock and Nass on Twitter. He's also one of my favorite follows on Twitter. He's funny as hell. Rocket, thank you for joining us tonight. What's up, man? How y'all doing? Thanks for having me, for real. Yeah, we're good, man. We're we're ready to talk some football. Let's get right into it. Um, Panthers Giants game. Panthers showed a little bit more promise this this past week. Uh, we'll start with you, Rocket. Uh, just initial observations from this past weekend's game. Um. Well, the off the first, I'm gonna go with the um starters first. The starters, I feel like I feel like we got something, but. The, the offensive line can't really get in sync until they get like several more reps together. Zavala, he he actually looked like the best lineman that played for us in that game, and that was his first NFL game. So that's and he missed time in camp, so that's really promising to me. I know a lot of people are like being negative about Icky or whatever, but I feel like he's good because he was good last year. So. I don't expect him to fall off. I mean, even if he has like a little slump, he won't be bad. Like I don't, I don't expect anything like that. But and then overall, the effort was way better than we've seen. Like everybody wanted to see. Well, I've seen a lot of fans complaining about effort, and, and they did. They actually did good. I like, I like every unit. Actually, every unit seemed like they were hustling, doing way better than they did in the previous games, which was what we all wanted to see. So, yeah. Bryson, you at all concerned with Icky? coming out of that game? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, like Rocket said, you know, last year I think Icky had one of the best seasons uh, as a left tackle in the history of football. So uh, he, he, I think, has got a little bit of rust maybe going into the season, but uh, I think he's going to be all right once once they mesh together. And, and they are going through a little bit of change on the offensive line. And, you know, maybe with uh, the, I guess – vanilla offense that Frank Reich says that he's running, uh, maybe that plays into a role of uh, maybe they're not taking it as seriously as they should. But uh, I'm, I'm not concerned with Iquanu. Now the defense, though, watching Daniel Jones come out and tear that defense up on the first opening drive made it look easy, like they were playing a high school defense out there. Uh, I know we, we didn't have the starters on the defensive line in, but that secondary was in for the most part. The linebackers were in. Looked like they were picking on Shaq Thompson a, a lot in that opening drive. Uh, that worried me a little bit, but uh, again, I'm sure they're not calling their defensive scheme like they will week one. But uh, a little bit of worrisome, just that secondary and, and those linebackers uh, for, from that game. Yeah, I want like Rocket said. I thought I thought Zavala played played well. Uh, he did give up that one penalty, but that was like on third and oh, oh, like twenty or something like that. So. Wasn't too concerned with that one. I thought Icky, um, I mean, he struggled. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I, You kind of got to go off of the tape, though, of last year. I thought he played well. I'm curious to see how much of a transition it's going to be because this is going to be, it seems like, a little bit more different of an offense and spread it out a lot. It seems like, at least in preseason, it's going to be a lot more passing. We'll see if that changes once the season starts with Miles Sanders coming back from injury. But um, you know, Carolina was ground and pound last year, and that suited Icky well. So I'm curious to see how he's going to handle a lot more pass uh, pass block attempts. Eric Bro, I don't know if you guys mentioned him at all, but man, that guy, that ball, 
that ball was to the moon, man. Yeah, he did get toasted. I can't lie. <laughs> that shit was terrible. It looked um, like he was walking back in coverage to to like try attempt to stop it too. He didn't. He wasn't really, you know, sprinting. Uh, yeah, kind of worrisome <laughs> kind of as well. Yeah, that was brutal. Um, I thought Amari Barno played well. He had, I think, it was a would be sack in the game. Um, that one of the Giants QB shook out of. Uh, obviously, Raquan Williams, we'll be talking mm-hmm. about him a little bit later. He had a really good game. Um, Blackshear, Bryson, we've I, both of us really like him. I felt like he had a big burst in that second half, obviously scoring the first touchdown for the Panthers. And then Shai Smith, got to give JJ's uh, guys credit. I mean, he, he showed up in that game, and he's been showing up. He's you know, really this past uh, this first game too so i thought he played well uh, mingo it looks like he made a rookie mistake uh between him and bryce on that third down came across the middle he probably should have kept going on the route uh, but yeah that was kind of my initial observations i kind of want to pull this up because i pulled this up last week um so if i'll just share this with you guys quick these are the pff grades for the o-line we shared this last week uh, with you guys so i kind of wanted to just revisit this here quickly um obviously yeah, uh, bozeman was getting his 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 lunch yeah by, uh, Dexter Lawrence. <laughs> yeah he uh, had he, his he, hands full i can't even lie yeah <laughs> so yeah icky icky obviously in the red bozeman in the red again you got to kind of sometimes take these with a grain of salt i thought zavala's grades were better than what they put out yeah. on yeah yeah i agree uh, with that but again, across the board, we still got guys in the red. I want to say last week, and maybe it was two, if I remember correctly. I'm not entirely sure on that. I know Nash Jensen, I didn't put him in here, but I think he had like a 70, 70 or 80 in pass blocking this past week. Uh, his run mm-hmm. protection, I think, kind of slipped uh, according to PFF. But yeah, across the board. Uh, Shout out to uh, Brady yeah. Christensen. That's, that's two weeks in a row I think he's been – one of the yeah. highest uh, uh, in pass blocking, uh, highest graded offensive lineman on on the team. I mean, he's if you're putting up in eight, you know, eighties and in, in on a grade in PFF. I mean, that's a, that's elite. Uh, so he's been he's been kicking ass out there for pass blocking at least. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. got a lot of he got a lot of flack. Oh, go ahead, the Rocket. No, I was just gonna say, yeah, like I haven't heard his name, so that's really a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> when you don't hear their name, it seems like that means they're doing good. So yeah. And his grade is is P four so. Yeah, so that's kind of what they were across the board. Again, you obviously you know Icky was the the big talker, and you see on Twitter people saying move him to left guard and all this other bullshit. <laughs> um, people panicking so damn early in preseason, which is really annoying. But that is what PFF had for this week. Um, any other observations, any guys that stuck out to you? Obviously, I thought Matt Corral played much better in this game for Carolina, and he obviously had some protection to give him some time, and I felt like he was dialing it up at points in the game. Um, and then the other, the fourth, fourth string QB, Lutton, is that the guy's name? Luton? Jake, like Jake Lutton. Yeah. yeah, Jake Lutton. I thought he played all right. Uh, and he had some I, – I believe he started a couple games last year for Jacksonville, didn't he, or a, a two years ago or something like that. I know he played – he's, he's played in the league a little bit. So, I thought he showed some promises. Um, yeah, he threw that nice touchdown to uh, Gary Jennings. Remember uh, when we were at uh, – I wasn't – back together – or back together Saturday, uh, Gary Jennings was making plays out there. We were like, who is this guy? And then – uh, and then I think at uh, Fan Fest, I was like, yeah, Gary Jennings, he might make the roster. He might make the roster. I was just playing around, but he keeps making plays like that. And, <laughs> and they might have to keep him. Yeah, they might have to keep him, for real. Yeah, another guy, too, that played a lot in the game is Javon Wims. Yeah, He's okay. seen a lot of playing time over the last two weeks, and Frank was talked or asked about him today, and he kind of compared him to Zachary Pascal, which was – interesting to say the least because he mentioned him as you know he he's played a role and he's a good blocker he can play on special teams and he can obviously help with the run game and when you got him out there for the run game you obviously got to throw to him too because you don't want teams to just picking it picking that up so yeah that's another guy to watch for that sixth spot 
Um, well, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's go to Mark Juan McCall because that's been the the talk this week. Um, everyone's kind of freaking out. The panic. Button, <laughs> everyone's pushing that panic button. So Mark Juan McCall earlier. If you guys haven't met, uh, heard. He was, you know, what do you want to call him? The starter on the unofficial depth chart. And when, you know, he started at nose tackle that first game and then was waived um, earlier this week for the incoming cornerback, Troy Hill. So I just kind of wanted to get your guys' thoughts. Bryson, I'll start with you. Just initial thoughts on the move to waive him. Yeah, I thought it was a uh, like a typo in the tweet because it was so shocking. <laughs> I, I, I didn't see that coming at all. I don't think anybody did. Uh, like you said, Curtis, he was a starter. Uh, and From all accounts, he was – an up and coming starter making a name, you know, he was undrafted last year, made the team played well. I thought when he got reps uh, to play and then uh, all of this off season through training camp and into preseason, we thought, you know, he was on the rise, but sounds like he actually wasn't. And he was on the, on the downfall and uh, wasn't really fitting what they wanted there at that nose tackle spot uh, in this uh, ever a defense. So, you know, I was caught off guard, but you know, some of these other guys that we're going to talk about later have stepped up and, they stepped up enough to cost a man his job. So, you know, unfortunately that's the business side of football. And if they think that they can get production from somebody else in your spot, then you're going to lose your spot. Rocket, what about you? Initial reaction to the McCall move? Yeah. Um, it was shocking. Like it was shocking, but I wasn't like mad. It didn't make me mad. Like, I understand. It was a lot, like he said, it was a lot of people flashing. It was a lot of people flashing at that very exact position. Like it's hard to judge who they was gonna keep. So it's really not, it's not surprising to me. But McCall is a good player. I see he got picked up by the Patriots or whatever. Yeah, yeah they yeah, got Bill be Belichick. They he likes to steal. <laughs> yeah, man. They he they, he seen him out there. He had to go snag him. Yeah, he's cherry picking. Yeah, I was a little shocked. Um, just based off of you know him starting in preseason and a lot of beat reporters were talking about him. I didn't really key in on him at any of the pre- – I don't know if you did it all, Bryson, at the Back Together Saturday or the Fan Fest. Uh, I'm trying to remember if there was any moments that popped out to me when watching the defense. Um, well, I talked to him at Fan Fest when we were <laughs> standing at the – Oh, did he you? The, yeah, he, he was one of the like last players to go in, and he like literally – the whole entire you know area that we were sitting talked to every single person that was sitting right there at the very front row, and I just said good luck this season. I said it's which is kind of ironic. I said, yeah, you really took that starting position, didn't you? And uh, he's like, yeah, oh, man. Boy, you, I you forgot about that. that. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> oh man, he was a super nice guy. So it sucks. Like he was, he, he seemed like he was genuine and really cared about the fans and wanted to you know make the fans feel welcome. But so you jinxed he, them. I guess I <laughs> no, did. That's... I guess I did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to talk to any other player for the rest of my life. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and he actually dapped me up. He, he, you know, he gave me a high five. Like, yeah, I mean, he dapped me up and everything oh, from the stands. So, it, it, it's sad to see him go, but you know, he, I'm sure he'll succeed up in New England. They, they love those big nose tackles up there. So, yeah, let's talk about the guy they brought in because uh, this was the corresponding move. Troy Hill comes in the corner. Um, he's played in. L.A., he's played in Cleveland the past couple of years as well, or played at Cleveland in 2021, um, and then was with the Rams. Just initial thoughts on the Troy Hill signing. Rocket, I'll start with you on this one. Um, I think it was a good move, like, considering, like, what was out there. Like, it's not really a lot of depth or talent out there in, like, the free agent pool. So I feel like that was a nice move, especially with Dante getting hurt, and they're like, that's already a red flag to go and get somebody, even though it's not serious. You know how he gets hurt every year. So it's like you might want to have, like, some kind of insurance. Even if he's not as good as Dante, he's close. Bryson? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm trying to pull up his stats. I know his last couple of years were, were actually pretty good, uh, you know, being his age and, and the position that he plays. Uh, uh, he, he's obviously got the experience in that. Uh, Evero defense as the nickel, and uh, and from all reports, he's you know he's a great teammate and uh, just a veteran presence in that locker room. And like Rocket mentioned, uh, Dante's injured, 
all the time, and now it sounds like that there's another injury going on with the with the opposite ankle uh, that bothered him last year. So to to see that pop up again, I mean, he's just made of glass at this point, and that cornerback room before signing Troy Hill couldn't afford an injury. And really even after signing Troy Hill can't afford an injury for one of the top two guys. Uh, but, you know, it does sound like that they have uh, a lot of trust in CJ Henderson um, from reports from what Frank had said today. Um, so we'll see, but I think Troy Hill's, you know, he's going to be more of a depth piece. I don't think he's going to be taking over Dante's spot, you know, opposite JC or anything like that, but he is going to be, that depth nickel, and he may even eventually start at nickel just based off of uh, how the others do there. Yeah, I was I pulled up his stats because I was curious. I mean, he I mean he made his money with the Rams in those seasons that Evero was there. He had two yeah. picks in 2018, two in 2019, and then three in 2020, and he had two touchdowns in 2020 on rich, uh, pick sixes. So was he playing? Evero, with- yeah, he plays nickel. I think he's played both, though. Like, I think he's pretty versatile. Mm. That's good. Um, and Evero was there from 2020 to 2017, and those were those three years he was there. So, I mean, he's definitely c- comfortable with his style, and obviously I think he'll know those his play calls as well. So I think that'll help out. Um, I was looking at it, though, just quickly here on their roster. The Panthers' corners – Besides Dante, everyone besides Dante Jackson's over six foot. Dante's five ten, and Troy Hill is five eleven. So he fits like that Dante Jackson mold for size because Carolina typically tries to go after. It's I mean just looking at the roster, you know six foot and over guys, pretty lengthy corners, and I feel like this guy kind of fits that Dante Jackson mold, and I think his injury. I think it's telling that they signed this guy. If you know he's her, Stanley Thomas Oliver was also kind of the backup to Jeremy Chin in the nickel. He's injured right now, so I think that is going to play a role as well. Um, yeah, your guy. Yeah, <laughs> the guy. <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> the surprise <laughs> one for my fifty-three, but yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, just based off of health for him. Speaking of injuries, I just kind of want to go over that a little bit here because there's been some developments even today. Obviously, Dante Jackson's out with an injury to his ankle, and it's opposite the injury he had in November that sidelined him all offseason. We got LaVisca Chenault, who is uh, in concussion protocol, which was um, something that you know kind of popped up today, and it sounds like was with um, – it happened in practice, and then Miles Sanders came back to practice today, which is you know another good sign. Um, you also have Marquise Haynes, who's put on the pads today, uh, and he has come back, so that's another good sign. Don't know if he's going to be playing in this upcoming preseason game, but that's something to look forward to. And then obviously we were just monitoring the Eddie Pinero stuff as well. It sounds like he should be ready week one, but that's still TBD at this point. What'd you guys think of that, Matthew Wright? Are you guys buying into this guy? I mean, he he hit a fifty yarder, I think, in in this last game. Any any thoughts on the right at kicker? Shit was a straight line too. It didn't have yeah. any arc on it. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. it was. It I, was I, 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 I'm an I'm an Eddie Pinera fan, so I, I know he he had that bad game in Atlanta. Uh, Rocket, I don't know if you know, but yeah, I, I think he's Pinera is a, a good kicker. He, you know, statistically was like top three last year and percentage wise and yeah he did have that terrible game in Atlanta but he bounced back the rest of the season and um I think that he's he's consistent for the most part and really I I feel like Zane was that as well but Zane had the injury problems that plagued him for two years in a row and I I guess Eddie's got an injury going on now but it doesn't sound like it's super serious so uh I don't buy into the Matthew Wright hype at all I think that Eddie's the guy and uh I don't no I'm, I'm good on that what about trading them? I mean, the guy's got value. I mean, he's he's hitting, making kicks. Yeah. Well, I'm uh I'm I'm thinking that there's you know Zane's going to be cut because they, uh, the 49ers drafted that that kicker Jake Moody. Uh, I think they drafted him like in the fifth or sixth round. So they spent draft capital on him. So Zane Gonzalez is not making a the 49ers roster. Uh, so he's going to be a free agent, uh, and I would take Zane over 
Matthew Wright. So I think that there's a couple of situations like that around the league. I, I think that there are a little bit of a surplus of kickers uh, that are probably a little bit better than Matthew Wright is. Yeah, I what? mean – we ain't seen enough of him. That's the, he can kick, yes. seem like, but we ain't even. We don't know if he can do that like a lot consistently. That's fair. I mean, that's fair. I, I'll just say like the Panthers have gotten really lucky with signings with kickers. I mean, they went from Zane, and then they he went down. They add Pe- Eddie. I mean, he hit a slew of kicks last year, and then they re-sign him, cut Zane, and now they find this guy and. I mean, have to, it's a, there's a lot of teams that struggle to find kickers in this league, and it seems like Carolina is just – they get lucky with these signings late. I mean, this is late in the training camp, too, when they brought this guy in, and, I mean, he filled the void for Eddie while he's out. It's just – it's crazy well, how they – Well, we, we went through hell with Joey Sly, so let's yeah. not <laughs> – we, we, we suffered, and even when Graham Gano was here, he struggled. I mean, that's the reason that they moved on. Like, like Graham Gano wasn't – consistent enough to keep his job but now he's like breaking records for the giants which is bullshit but uh and he's just absolutely goes nuts against us every time we play him but yeah i mean i you know we've been through our our kicking issues and we have been lucky here lately but joey sly i still have nightmares about hey man scott fitter (laughs) he's the kicker whisperer man he really is you finding him (laughs) all right let's go to the nfc south rankings we discussed this last week And we only got through the offensive side of the ball. So we're going to go through team by team across the board and kind of rank them in the NFC South for defensive positions. I'm going to share my screen here with you guys. And we'll start with the D-line. And Bryson, let's start with you on this. So what we're kind of doing here is just kind of rank them across the board, you know, one to four of who you kind of think is, you know, has the best uh, group here as far as the defensive line is concerned. Yeah, and and uh, Rocket, I'll, I'll do the same thing that I did last week. I'm trying to be as unbiased – or I'm trying to be unbiased as possible. So, but <laughs> And I apologize. Yeah. I made yeah. this I made this graphic last week, and Marquand McCall is clearly not in here anymore. Yeah. So, <laughs> so just to get rid of that, and obviously we're going to have to put in a different name, but – for this exercise, this is what I had made last week, so I apologize. Go ahead, Bryson. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start off. Uh, I am trying to be unbiased, but I do think Carolina probably has the best defensive line of the teams listed here. Uh, I think Brian Burns really is the best defensive lineman out of any of these listed. And then Derek Brown is probably, if not the best defensive tackle, the second best. And then Justin Houston is just as good as, as these other veterans that these other teams have. So I'm taking Carolina one. I'm going to go the Bucks too. Uh, Kalijah Kansi is that the rookie from Pittsburgh. Uh, I believe he's injured, but uh, I'm not sure if he's out for the year or not. Um, but he, you know, he uh, first round pick. He's got a lot of potential. Uh, Vita Vey is a beast. Uh, Shaq, Shaq Barrett is a beast. And then uh, Joe Tryon Choinka was, I think, their first round pick two years ago. Uh, so they, they got a, some depth on that defensive line. And uh, if they stay healthy, I think it's a pretty good one. Uh, then I'm going to go. I guess the Falcons three, uh, David Onyemata used to play for the Saints. Now he plays for the Falcons. Calais Campbell obviously is aging, but still a good player. Uh, Grady Jarrett, obviously one of the best defensive tackles in the South, NFC South. And then um, Bud Dupree, I think, I believe he came from maybe the Steelers or something. But, uh, and then fourth, the the Saints, uh, I've, you know, that's just like a lot of no-name players right there. Cameron Jordan. Uh, obviously we, we know him, uh, Brian Bercy, I believe he's the rookie from Clemson. Um, but other than that, I really don't know any of those other guys. So, uh, I, the order that they're in on the screen from left to right is, is the order that I, I would go with. Rocket, what about you? Yeah, I'm going to say the same thing. Like it, it seemed like it's in order. Shaq, cause Shaq Barrett is really, I was going, it's close between the Bucks and the, and I would say the Falcons, but Shaq Barrett is like he's like a really good player. He's like that's like fifteen guaranteed sacks, kind of like coming at you right there. So yeah, yeah, I would go Panthers, Bucks, Falcons, and Saints. Yeah, I mean Bud Dupree could sneak up and have a good season, but uh, Rocket, uh, aren't, aren't you a Clemson fan? Yeah, yeah. What, uh, what can you tell us about that Brian Bercy guy? Oh yeah, I mean. I was mad when they got him. I thought I was thinking we was gonna get him back then, 
Because he, yeah. I didn't think he was going to last that long, as long as he lasted. But, I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of scared about that. I'm kind of a little scared about that and uh, Calais Campbell. Because, yeah. I mean, that interior, <laughs> <laughs> that interior <laughs> pressure on Bryce Young is scary to think about. But, Absolutely. Hey, I just hope Zavala is ready, you know. <laughs> we all we do. All we do. All do. <laughs> right. Man, I... Oh, I'm torn on this one. I guess I'm going to go bias and I'll stick with this train of Carolina at one. I think Brian Burns and Derek Brown are pretty elite at their position. I'm going to go Atlanta too. I really like, I think Calais Campbell is a just a beast. I, Anya Mata is good. Jarrett, he had, he caused troubles last year for Carolina and I like Bud Dupree as well. Oh man, I mean this there's some good D lines in this in this yeah. division for it being so shitty. I was um, just thinking that, bro. It's like <laughs> everybody has a, a solid a solid defensive line. Like that's crazy. Yeah, I'm I'm torn with Atlanta and the I feel like this is so damn close. I I guess I'll go Bucks three and then the Saints four, but I feel like that's an insult to the Saints because I feel like they're really damn good as well. So it's tough to say, but there's there's they got some good units in the NFC South as far as the D line goes. Let's go to the linebacking core here. If I can figure this out, here we go. Um, let's see. Let me exit this. I'm still trying to figure this out, so bear with me. <laughs> good, bro. All right, here we go. So the linebackers, and I'll start this time. Um, man, I don't even know. I can't even name one. Why on do you Falcons. have Marco on the call listed at, at linebacker? <laughs> oh, see, yeah. <laughs> Dude, he's harassing us right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> For real. Dude, he must have been on my mind when I made these graphics. But um, yeah, you saw the future. You knew. You knew he was going to get cut or something. Like, you felt it or something, bro. <laughs> it's supposed to be Deion Jones in there. But okay. um, my copy and paste just clearly wasn't working. That day. <laughs> but, yeah, if, if we go across again, Marquand McCall off the team, forget about him. Um, but I was going to say Atlanta. I don't even know these guys. Like, I've never heard of – I've never heard of these guys, at any of their linebackers, to be totally yeah. honest with you. <laughs> um <laughs> If I had to pick, though, just off of the pure starters, I'm going with the Bucks, hands down, at one. Devin White, Levante, David, I I would love any of those guys in Carolina. Yep. Um, two, I'm going to have to go probably with Carolina. I do like Demario Davis, though, with the Saints. He's a really good player. Uh, I think Jalen Smith is going to be good for them. Um, but I really like Sha Shaq Thompson and Frankie Louvu. Luvu's been very underrated these last few seasons, and I feel like he's just getting better and just, you know, scratching the surface of his success in this league. And then I'd probably go with the Saints and then the Falcons to end it out. I just think Falcons, that's that might be their weakest spot on defense is their linebackers. Bryson, what about you? Yeah, uh, I actually like the Saints uh, group the best. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big Demario Davis fan. Uh, Pete Warner – another really good underrated player for the saints. And then uh, Jalen Smith, like you mentioned, uh, I think that they probably have the the deepest uh, linebacking core uh, in, in the South. And then two, I'll go the bucks, Devin white, Levante, David, you know, two of the staples in the South for a while, uh, probably the, the best pairing uh, yep. in the NFC South. And then three, I'll go Carolina. Uh, I do, you know, I love Frankie Louvu, Shaq Thompson, Worries me a little bit. Uh, aging didn't look great in the preseason. Uh, but, uh, you know, they do have other guys like the Grugier Hill stepping up and, uh, and Deion Jones coming in. So uh, three there. And then, yeah, I've never heard of any of those players on the Falcons. And I, I'm, <laughs> I, I consider myself, you know, a pretty big NFL fan. And if I haven't heard of your, like, at least a starter, like, I don't understand what yeah, you're doing. Okay. But that, I mean, that's, that's a bad group. Rocket? Yeah, I'm a, um I'm gonna go with the Bucks first because, like you said, they got two two staples, two good consistent starters that show up every year. So it's hard to not put them first. Um, second, 
it's close with the Panthers because yeah, I'm a little biased too, like bro said. But I'm gonna go with the Saints though. Cause they do got a nice linebacking core. I do like Demario Davis, even though they sleep on Frankie Louvu and him and Davis have the same stats, kind of. And third, I'm gonna go with us. We got a we got a nice core. I feel like we got we got nice depth right there, like that we didn't used to have. I feel like K Moo really could step up. He's been making a lot of plays that I seen Frankie Louvu kind of make when I was like, dang, he might be kind of nice. So, yeah, and then last, it's got to be the Falcons because, like he said, I don't know any of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, yeah, if Mark, go ahead. I was going to say, it does seem like the, the Grugier Hill is another Louvu sign, and, and, and they're, like, super friendly with each other. I believe they're – from the same area of uh, mm. is it, is it Hawaii that they're I I'm, I don't want to misspeak but uh, but I know they've connected a lot and it seems like he's kind of rejuvenated here in Carolina hopefully getting back to that season he had a couple years ago with 100 tackles uh, that that he was you know playing really well with so uh, and maybe he is another diamond in the rough that they found in, in that linebacking room that yeah and, yeah Grusher Hill is from Hawaii so they both kind of share that. Um, but yeah, you that was a good comparison, Rocket. I didn't I didn't think of that. Um, him and uh, Frankie Louvu. But yeah, I feel like he's been and that was one guy I put down in my notes too from this last game. He was uh, he just he he's an, he's got a knack for the ball. He finds yeah. a way to make plays. Yeah, like he's just always flying to the ball. Like we that's what we be needing. Like we need yeah. more people like that. So if we got two of those, mm, it'd be crazy. Well, I'll tell you what, if I got Mar uh, Marquand McCall in the secondary, we got a problem here. So let's see if I <laughs> let's see if I struck this up. Let's go. We're good. Oh, We're now good. we lit. <laughs> All right, Bryson, you kick us off with the secondary. Okay. Uh, so for this, just so you guys know, I took the top three corners and then the two safeties. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm going to go with the Saints one. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore, really good corner. Paul Sandebo, really good corner. Tyron Matthew, Marcus May, two really good safeties. Bradley Roby's all right, I guess. Uh, but, I mean, that, that that's a pretty deep and complete room there. I think Lattimore is one of the better corners in the league. So, I'd go, I'd go one. Uh, Saints, two, I would go – damn, this is a hard choice. Uh, two, I would probably go Carolina. Uh with J.C. Horn, if they stay healthy, obviously, uh, J.C. Horn, Dante, pretty good pairing. Uh, J.C. Horn obviously has the uh, ability to be one of the best corners in the league. He just has to stay on the field and play in football games. Um, then Von Bell and Xavier Woods, I think, are is one of the better safety pairings in the league as well. So Carolina 2, I'll go Falcons 3, uh, A.J. Terrell, Jeff Okuda. Uh, Okuda is injured uh, like you have on there, but A.J. Terrell, uh, you know, high-end pick. Uh, I believe he was picked close to C.J. Henderson and um, a good player. Jesse Bates was a really underrated signing, I think, for the Falcons coming from Cincinnati. He's a really good safety. Uh, and then fourth, I'll go Bucks. Uh, you know, I know Antoine Winfield Jr. is a good player. Carlton Davis, pr a pretty good corner. But other than that, uh, not much there. Rocket, what about you? Yeah, um, yeah I'm going to go one. I'm going to go with the – uh, I'm going to go with the Saints on one. Yeah, they got – I ain't even I ain't even know they had Marcus May, but, yeah, dang. <laughs> that, that might be nice if Marshawn Lattimore can stay healthy. They'll be, they'll be pretty solid. And Bradley Roby, that's a good – he's a good pickup, too. Two. Uh, I'm going to go with Carolina just because they got two good safeties. Like, a lot of teams don't have two good safeties. So, yeah, I'm going to go with us on two. Even though Dante is kind of injury prone, we still got the back end. Having two good safeties is underrated. I just want to say that that's an underrated thing to have. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, three, I'm going to go with the Falcons because that Jesse Bates signing, that was big. I don't know why. I, it's crazy how him and, Tom, and Marcus May came in our division. <laughs> yeah. And fourth, I'm going to go with the Bucks. I don't really – they got decent players, but they ain't got nobody over the top in their secondary, so they might struggle kind of. Like, they don't have anybody elite. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. 
never noticed that even. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we're going to be across the board pretty similar here. I definitely go Saints one. Lattimore is a stud. I mean, their depth is ridiculous. Yeah. Honey Badger's a beast and at safety. Marcus May, he's a heavy hitter. Carolina and Atlanta, I feels like 2A and 2B is pretty damn close. I really like Jesse Bates. I yeah. believe that's a Wake Forest product right there. He, I was hoping Carolina was going to get him this offseason. Obviously, they went with Von Bell. Um, but I feel like they're pretty comparable. I do like J.C. Horn over the corners in Atlanta, just personally. Um, so I'll go with Carolina 2 and then Atlanta 3. And then Car the Bucks do have pieces. Like Jamal Dean ain't – I mean, he ain't a bum either. Carlton Davis is pretty good. I think Winfield Jr. is up and coming. I don't know Ryan Neal whatsoever. So um, – but yeah, that's kind of rounds out the secondary. Let's so, go to I, go I'm ahead. Not, yeah, or, or, I'm sure we'll, we're going to do special teams, right? Uh, but, yeah. Of uh, course. If, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, I think the Saints had the most number one rankings out of any uh, any team out of the South. I don't know if if we've kept track of that or not, but I'm pretty sure. I they, haven't. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go back and and get a number, but yeah, I mean, they're definitely the most out of any you know they got quarterback they got running back i believe they got mm. wide receiver uh maybe even o line i mean Jeez. yeah it was it was they they've got a pretty clean i mean they're they're a good team it's made me respect them a little bit more all right we can't forget about this group this group i had to put in here so this is the punter or the kicker punter the long snapper and then the returner i had to include the long snapper in so I'll start here, and I am definitely biased in this. I would say, man, I got some good uh, – there's a couple good good guys in here. I'm going to go with Carolina 1. I think Johnny Hecker is – he's a damn – I mean, he's, he's going to – I think he's going to be a Hall of Fame punter without a doubt in this league. Um. And that, I mean, that puts a lot. That puts a lot of weight in the Carolinas category here for the special teams. I think Eddie Pinheiro is solid. JJ Jansen's one of the best long snappers, if not the best long snapper in the league. Um, the only thing holding Carolina back is the returner, um, because we haven't seen a whole lot out of Blackshear. I would put Patterson over him if I had to choose any of the returners. Um, but, yeah, I think across the board that group is pretty deep. So let me go Carolina 1, Falcons 2, I think. Uh, I think Koo is a really good kicker. They got a pretty good put punter in Pinion. Um, and then, I again, Patterson, I think, is uh, he's a pretty good returner with the ball in his hands. Probably go Will. I'd probably go the Saints 3. Will Lutz is solid. Uh, Rashid Shahid is pretty good. Shifty, he's got a burst to him. Uh, and then the Bucks, I really don't know a lot about this unit. I don't know Tompkins. Uh, I think Bucks, I feel like every time we talk about the Bucks, yeah. that's <laughs> not anybody. They might not win a game this year. They're, they're damn bad. Really? Holy shit. They're bad. <laughs> but yeah, I put, I put the Bucks at four. Bryson, what about you? Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to take Atlanta's first, um, just based off of Cordero Patterson. I think that he's the best returner in the South. And uh, Young Way Koo is uh, probably the best kicker, uh, in my opinion, in the NFC South. He's seems like every year he's making clutch kicks to win games for the Falcons. So I'll go Falcons one. Uh, I'll go Panthers two, you know, based off of Johnny Hecker. And, uh, again, I do like Pinheiro. I think he's consistent. I do like Blackshear a lot. I think he is going to flash this year as a, as a returner if he is the kick, punt return and kick return guy because he does have that shiftiness like Rashid Shahid does uh, in New Orleans. And then that leads me to New Orleans being third. Well, Lutz is a good kicker, uh, Rashid Shahid, like we mentioned. And then fourth, the Bucks. Uh, I, I mean, I don't even know who any of these guys are. I've heard of Chase McLaughlin, the kicker, but nobody else. Um, like, pretty common theme throughout this whole entire thing that we've done for the Bucks. <laughs> Rocky, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, one, I'm going to go with uh, the Falcons. They got, yeah, they got three people that I really. I know that are really pretty good. Two, I'm going to go with this because Johnny Hecker is like top three punter in the league. So Blackshear, Blackshear can be 
he could be some. I wish he would get more snaps in the offense. I hope he does actually, because like you said, like I was saying earlier, he's really kind of slipped on. Yeah. And yeah, four. It's got to be the Bucks. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anybody there. <laughs> Well, that wraps up our rankings. Like Bryson said, we I didn't count them. I wish I would have, but I do think Saints were the overwhelming uh, team to receive the most ones out of both rankings. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had Ricky on last week for that, for the offensive side of things. Uh, mm -hmm. It seemed like Carolina was majority of two for the most part, mm -hmm. uh, give or take with Atlanta on a couple of positions. And then I, the box, I think, hands down across the board was – I don't even know if they received a one for any group. Oh, well, <laughs> so, well, may, may, they might have a wide receiver with uh, Mike. Yeah, I, yeah, I, they I, did. Yeah. They did. Yep. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Uh, I yep. think that they did. So there you go. So the Bucks did get something. <laughs> did get something um, on the offensive side of things. Well, let's talk about this game coming up this week. We got a Friday night game. Panthers Lions. We all know what happened last year, December Christmas Eve. That was a beautiful game to be at. Um, ben Johnson's coming to town. That's a storyline. He was probably David Tepper, I would say, number one, uh, headed into these coaching interviews, and he backed out you know, the night before. But he's coming to town. So I just kind of wanted to get your guys' thoughts on this game. What do you want to see from the starters? Anything, any players you're keying in on of you're going to watch or hope to have a good game? Bryson, you want to start? Yeah, I would, for the love of God, love to see a touchdown from Bryce Young uh, <laughs> to anybody on this team. I feel like they need to dial up something for him and give him some confidence going into week one. Uh, I do think that that's going to play a, a, you know, a part. He is human, and I'm sure not being able to throw a touchdown in his short amount of time that he's played in the preseason if he does not throw one on uh, Friday – I'm sure it's going to bother him, and I'm sure he's going to think about it. So I, I think being able to give him the confidence of at least just throwing a touchdown or, you know, running in one, or I don't even know what he needs to do, but just get let him get a touchdown, dial up some plays. You know, it's, it's not like every team that we play this year is going to look at the third preseason game every single time we play them, to, and they're going to exactly know our offense if we dial up a couple of plays to get Bryce Young some confidence going. So – I, I want to see him score. Uh, I, I'm sure he wants to see himself score. Uh, other players, of course, I'm going to look at Icky and, and see if he's going to have a bounce back game. You know, you can't have three bad games in a row. That's speaking of confidence. I mean, going into week one with three bad, um, not even bad, three horrible preseason games in a row uh, could be detrimental to the start of the season for for him at left tackle. So, uh, looking at him. Uh, I'm, and that six wide receiver spot is kind of interesting to me. I feel like there's a couple of guys there that uh, could that are, that are vying for that spot. Uh, you know, a lot of people like Shai Smith. Um, there's been talk of Wims, Greg Jennings. Uh, you know, there or Gary Jennings. Sorry, uh, Greg Jennings. Greg Jen yeah, Greg, <laughs> Greg Jen I got that Madden video stuck in my head from back in the day. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I I think that that's an interesting uh, spot to look that I'll be watching as well. Before you jump in your rocket, just so you guys are aware, I was looking at this earlier. Uh, the Lions are not expected to play their starters. Dan Campbell said today, unless something changes, the plan is to keep resting the starters. They have not played the starters at all in preseason. What? So, so something to monitor. I, I saw today from the article I was looking at. They did like a bait. They did basically did like a preseason game today in practice. They ran for you know fifteen minute quarters. And at, at, at halftime, they literally went in for 10 minutes in their bubble and then came back out and kind of simulated it like a game. So it sounds like, at, you know, unless something changes drastically, I don't think the starter's going to play it. But we will see Teddy Bridgewater out there in that 50 jersey. <laughs> that shit is <laughs> ugly. <laughs> yeah. crazy. But Rocky, what are you looking at for this game? Yeah, like bro said, I just I want to see Bryce Young at least like get some plays where they gonna let him spin it. Like I want to see him get some real confidence, and we definitely need to see him get a touchdown. Like if yeah. we can just get like three solid drives, like or something like that, just look like real positive, something to build on going into week one. 
without showing too much, that would be nice for Bryce Young. Because like, you can tell that he wants to make a play so bad. And when he makes that first play, he's going to want to make so many more. And I feel like we really need that, for real. I know a lot of people. It's preseason, but we still need to see Bryce Young do that before he, like he said, he's human. We need. I know he needs to see himself do that, too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? Any other guys you're looking at, or is that? Um, I mean, the defensive line, they cut McCall, so I want to see who the person they cut him for, who they're trying to keep. I want to see if they're going to flash. The O-line, I'm looking at the whole O-line. I want to see them. They play decent, like, but I want to see everybody play good at one time. That would be nice to see from our team. And that's really that's really what I'm really looking for. I'm really looking at the offense more though, because I just want to see our first team offense do a little bit more than they what they've done so far. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're all in agreement. I think it's we. I would like a clean first drive from Bryce Young. I don't want it on the second or third. I don't want them getting bailed out by penalties like they did in when they you know got the field goal this last week. Clean drive, make it methodical, go down and score a touchdown. And if it's only one drive and it's clean, I, I'm fine with that. Just let yeah, him yeah. put stay end on a positive, end with that touchdown, take him out of there. I don't mm-hmm. think Miles Sanders needs to play. I know that's been a discussion. I let him rest. Let he, that guy's a vet. He knows what he's doing. Um, you know, he's got familiarity with Deuce and stuff. Just let that guy rest for week one. They are going to need him for week one in that divisional game. Uh, you guys mentioned Zavala. I'd like to see a bounce back from him and really everyone across the offensive line. And then they need to come out of this game injury free. No major injuries at all uh, across the board with starters. So I hope they are careful with that as well because that's the most important thing because they got a tough stretch right right out of the gate. So, But I think that's all I have. Uh, for this evening i just want to thank you rocket for coming on we do appreciate it man i I mean you're welcome to come you're welcome to come on any other time as well um i know you've been if you guys are not following on twitter seriously the guy he's got great takes and you you are funny (laughs) as hell on there so i (laughs) i appreciate it (laughs) nah man i appreciate y'all bro man this is this is really dope man i appreciate everything y'all do for us and keeping us updated on stuff you know All right, Bryson, let's move on. We're going to be doing our final 53-man roster predictions for you guys this evening. We did one a couple weeks ago, and this was, you know, it's kind of a test trial. See See how we're going to do here, but this is going to be our final one. The final cut is next week, Tuesday, before we record our next episode. So we wanted to get this in before then. Um, And let's get this show on the road, I guess. I mean, I think it's... Well, I guess we'll we'll wait and see. I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> jump the gun here. Let's start with QB. I'll start and then and then you can kind of go to the next position after that. Mine is same, obviously, as you know, the last time we did this. Bryce Young, Andy Dalton, Matt Corral. I think they do carry three quarterbacks. I don't think they're gonna trade Corral. I don't think you've seen enough from him for teams wanting to, you know, make a trade for him. And I don't think there's been some major injury in the NFL where they need depth or anything like that. So I'm going to stick with the three QBs I had initially. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I uh, I think Corral has made strides in um, his development. You know, essentially this is his rookie season. I thought he looked good uh, versus the Giants when he settled in. And uh, I do think he's going to continue to grow and be a, a, a good backup option for Carolina. So uh, three quarterbacks, Bryce Young, Andy Dalton, and Corral. Uh, moving on to the running backs. Uh, I got the same three that I originally had. Miles Sanders, uh, Raheem Blackshear, two, Chuba Hubbard, three. I have the same as well, but I had Spencer Brown with question marks because I'm just – I'm confused at how, like, they play – he's played a lot. Like, yeah. he's, he's played more snaps offensively than Blackshear. Yeah. But I, I do not – like, I don't see Blackshear being the cut. He obviously has the special teams, and he's really the only returner, I feel like, that has really returned in games. So then I'm thinking, like, is Chuba on the fringe and not making the team? But, like, Frank has talked highly of him. So I'm – that Spencer Brown is – that's I don't know what they're going to do with him because he's played a lot, and they've – I mean, he's gotten some praise. He got praise today from Deuce Staley. Like, 
he's just that's a weird one for me. I don't know what do, what do you think of that with this? Yeah, I, I think I think the way I read it is that they're not playing Blackshear more than Spencer Brown because they know what they have in Blackshear. I think they're trying to uh, to see what they have in Spencer Brown. So they're playing him, giving him more playing time, and um, you know I think that he's he struggled. <laughs> A little bit uh, here and there, I think, versus the Giants. I think he had a fumble. Uh, he had a drop. Uh, I mean, I don't think I don't think he's close to making the roster, in my opinion. And maybe he's a practice squad guy. Maybe yeah. that's kind of what they're kind of feeling out for. Yeah, I, he definitely is. I, he will be on the practice squad because, again, he'll have that for, uh, familiarity, at least with the with the with um, his teammates. And, and he has been in the system for a little while. So uh, he definitely will be a practice squad guy, but – I think those three are pretty solidified in that running back room. Yeah, I wanted to mention too quickly is uh, Cameron Peoples. Very shocked at his playing time. He has not played in the preseason. I think maybe one snap. I might be even wrong on that. I might not even been a snap. But he's supposed to get a little bit of action, it sounds like, on Friday. But yeah. that was another guy. He seemed like, I guess, what Spencer Brown has been doing is that kind of that bruiser back, a little bit bigger type for Carolina, which they really don't have. Um, but yeah, that's just, I just wanted to mention him quickly because that was something I'm, I was a little shocked at because I felt like, you know, he showed some promise at app state, but obviously they, they, they have a pretty good, you know, feeling with Sanders Hubbard and Blackshear. But yeah, I just wanted to throw out Sant Brown because he played, he's played a decent amount wide receivers for me. Here we go. This will be this where it gets interesting. Yeah. I got them carrying six. I think we both initially had Demir Bird on this list. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting obviously rid of him. He's off the team now. And I'm going to go with Shai Smith making that sixth spot. He came on this last game. I feel like he's shown enough even this past year. And I know I know it's a new coaching staff. I feel like with his versatility as well on special teams, I feel like he – he can make that final spot. I was between him and Javon Wims just of how much praise Frank Reich had for him today. I'm like, Oh my God, like <laughs> this guy actually could make something. And he wasn't, you know, shy Smith was like a, you know, the old regime guy, but I think shy Smith does make the final cut at six. Yeah. So uh, again, and sorry, I didn't go. Yeah. You can go through the six because we both had the same list up to five. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty common uh, knowledge, I, I would assume, but DJ Shark, Thielen, Mingo, Terrace Marshall Jr. And Chenault being the first five and then trying to decide on that sixth. I went back and forth with Shai Smith and Wims and I, I was swayed today with Frank Reich talking about them. So I got, I got Wims taking that sixth spot and Shai being the one that's cut. Uh, I do think Wims has flashed in the preseason. Uh, I do think that he is a solid special teamer as well. Uh, he has, you know, an established history in the league. Uh, he's, you know, he played for the Bears for a while. Uh, not, you know, not a whole lot to show from, from that time in the league. But, uh, you know, he, he does have some highlight tape. Uh, and I think that him and Shai Smith are a uh, very similar play style very similar wide receiver, and I think that they might just go with the uh, the veteran there and and take Williams. Yeah, and I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. I think a big value for them too, as well as blocking. And I feel like Williams is a better blocker than Shy, so that could sway their decision too, as well. In you know, in the run game, um, but I definitely could see that. What do you got for tight ends? Yeah, tight ends uh, hasn't changed for me. Uh, I, I have them keeping three. Hayden Hurst, uh, Ian Thomas, and Tommy Trimble. And I do think that by the end of this season, I think Tommy Trimble might be the best tight end out of that room. Wow. I'm going to, I will remember this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, we'll see what happens. I don't, I can't see that happening. But I do agree. Three across the board. I don't see anyone else in that room. Hayden Hurst, Tommy Trimble, Ian Thomas. I know we had talked before when we did the the initial 53 roster pr prediction. I had mentioned maybe Ian Thomas is a fringe cut. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they'll keep those three. I think Hayden Hurst is the clear front runner there. Uh, Tommy Tremble, still haven't seen a lot from him in preseason. That's just me. Um, You're not so looking again. 
<laughs> but yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think Hayden Hurst is a great addition for that room. O line, here's another interesting one. Um, my initial one was Iki Aquanu, Brady Christensen, Bradley Bozeman, Austin Corbett, Taylor Moten, Cade Mays, Zavala, Justin McCray, Cam Irving, and Michael Jordan. That's what I had a couple weeks ago. That has changed. I've actually downsized the offensive line. So I think I had 10 guys in there initially. I brought, I dropped it to nine with two cuts. So I have Cam Irving and Michael Jordan gone. And if Michael Jordan is still on this team on Tuesday, I'm going to be royally pissed. Because that guy can't block for shit. Um, and I have Nash Jennings making the team. I feel like he's risen up these last couple of weeks. He's played he played a decent amount this last game and he looked good. And you know, the coaches and I think Dan Morgan said today, like one game can make a difference. I feel like he's on the right side of things right now. Michael Jordan has struggled heavily. I could see him being the, you know, for sure cut. Cam Irving, I think, is also another one. I don't think they need to carry 10 at this point. So I'm going to go with nine, and Nash Jennings would be the addition, and then Cam Irving and Jordan are the cuts on uh, from my initial one. What about you? Yeah, uh, Nash Jensen. Nash Jensen. What was I saying, Jennings? <laughs> yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. I, I got you all messed up with the Gary and Greg Jennings thing. It's, it's awful. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Nash Jensen. Um, I have them keeping 10. Uh, I went back and forth with them cutting. Uh, so we, we, had, uh, we originally had the same list. Uh, on our first mock of the 53 man roster. So starting with that list that you mentioned earlier, um, I went back and forth with him cutting Cam Irving, but I do think that they end up keeping him just for that swing tackle position. And I know it's over hyped, but the locker room presence that he has with the offensive line seems like he's everybody's friend uh, on, on in that room. So not a great blocker overall. Uh, I, I would actually say a bad offensive lineman. Um, he's a decent swing tackle, but, uh, but I do think that they keep him. Uh, I do think Michael Jordan is cut. I don't think he's shown anything uh, to warrant a uh, a paycheck from the NFL, uh, to put it bluntly. Um, and I think that Nash Jensen, uh, also known as Nash Jennings, yeah. is going to <laughs> is going to make this roster because he has shown a lot. We've talked about him previously on this uh, podcast, and he's he's shown a lot in the preseason. And I think that he's a player that uh, is going to make this roster. So I have him keeping 10 because I don't have them cutting Cam Irving. All right. What do you got for D line? Yeah, D line. Uh, so originally I had Henry Anderson, Kobe Jones, Derek Brown, Marquand McCall, uh, Tuttle, Deshaun Williams. And that was it uh, for, for D line. Let me make sure here. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't have the, I have, the edges with the outside linebackers. Yep. Um, so uh, I've changed it. Um, obviously, Marquand McCall is not on the team anymore. Uh, so I have subtracting him. I added Raquan Williams, the uh, D tackle that uh, has been highlighted in camp. Um, I have I no longer have Kobe Jones making the roster. I feel like he has not shown anything in the preseason to warrant uh, the camp hype that he has he had uh, going into the preseason. Uh, instead of him on the roster, I have them keeping Taylor Stallworth, another uh, D tackle that has shown that has flashed in the preseason um, and made tackles for losses and, and been disruptive on that defensive line. So I have them keeping, uh, you know, losing McCall, losing Kobe Jones, and keeping Raycon Williams and Taylor Stallworth. Yeah. So my list was, I believe, the same as yours initially. Mm -hmm. um, I have one addition and two subscribe two subtractions on this. So obviously Marquan McCall gone, Kobe Jones, I don't have him making it anymore either. Again, that's, you know, sometimes we can buy the hype in training camp and that's kind of what we were doing initially before we saw the games, but I agree with you. I haven't seen enough from Jones in the games and that's what matters to make the team. Yep. And I just have them going with Raquan Williams. So that would give you Henry Anderson, Shai Tuttle, Derek Brown, Deshaun Williams, and Raquan Williams with five defensive linemen in that rotation. Um, moving to linebackers, this list I feel like is the only one I really didn't touch. 
Um, obviously, Justin Houston is now on the team. When we did this prior, he was not with them as, uh, at the moment. So my list would be Brian Burns, Justin Houston, Marquis Haynes, YGM, Deion Jones, Shaq Thompson, Frankie Louvu, DJ Johnson, Camus Grugier Hill, Brandon Smith, and Amari Barno. I think that group, I would be shocked if any of those guys I just named were cut. Like, I would be blindsided unless they were traded in a move for someone else. I would be stunned if they do not make the 53. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I fucked up. Um, I forgot <laughs> Justin Houston wasn't <laughs> on the list. So, I, I made a last second um, adjustment. I'm going to keep my defensive line as is because I like that group. Uh, I. I am changing my linebacking group here. I'm going to cut Amari Barno, um, and wow, put in Justin Houston. Yeah, so uh, Justin Houston, Brian Burns, YGM, Marquise Haynes, DJ Johnson. Uh, did you just name the edges, or did you name the uh, also? I named them all. I coupled the linebackers with the edge rushers. Yeah. So then also the Grugier Hill, Deion Jones, Frankie Louvu. I have. Brandon Smith getting cut as well uh, from this roster. Uh, I have uh, that's an addition to this new uh, 53 man update that we have here. Uh, and then, of course, Shaq Thompson. So Amari Barno, Brandon Smith out, Justin Houston in for the linebacking. Wow. That'll be interesting to see. Yeah. I know I, I, I talked about Brandon Smith maybe be on the cusp too last week. I still think they stick with that group. I think that linebacking core. Amari Barno has showed up in preseason. I know. I think he's now dealing with an injury. If I'm, let me try to pull this up quickly because I thought I had saw something and I don't see it on here. But um, I thought he showed some promise in preseason. So, but yeah, that's. I mean, that's some some uh, that's some good moves. I like. I like that we're different more this time. So yeah. that's a good thing. All right, corners. You want to start with corners? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll go. Um. So the only thing different for me here is uh, of course the addition of Troy Hill. So uh, you got JC Horn, Dante Jackson, CJ Henderson, Eric Rowe, Keith Taylor. Then you add in Troy Hill. So that's why I cut Brandon Smith originally. Uh, Troy Hill took his spot on the roster for me. So I think that Troy Hill's a great addition. Like we talked about earlier with rocket. Um, I think he's going to fill in veteran presence in that locker room, veteran presence in that, in that positional group. And then also in that nickel role, and he can fill in on the outside if he needs to, but I don't think that's his primary position on, on this team right now. Yeah, I had a couple cuts here. I kept this room pretty thin, actually, um, which may, I guess, could be surprising. But I went with five corners, J.C. Horn, Dante Jackson, C.J. Henderson, Keith Taylor, and I, and Troy Hill. My original list included Stanley Thomas Oliver, who's injured. I think he's going to be cut. And I also, I think Eric Rowe is going to be cut, which would leave the corners at five. Now moving to safety, this is actually the room I didn't touch at all. Same. I have Von Bell, Xavier Woods, Jeremy Chin, obviously going to be that Rover, big nickel guy, Sam Franklin, and then Jamie Robinson's the draft pick. I don't see him going anywhere. He's kind of had his ups and downs, but he had some good plays this past week as well. Someone we didn't mention off the top, but he deserves a little recognition because he was getting blasted online for that, and we blasted him a little bit as well, and he made a couple good plays there. So, yeah, I have that room staying the same as what I had. Yeah, uh, I, I have it staying the same as well. Uh, I do want to go back, though, real quick. The Eric Rowe cut, I feel like that's a little, a little overreaction to the bad – uh, the bad touchdown he gave up because other than that, he has played well in the preseason. You know, he's, he's laid the wood on some players, uh, made a couple of big hits. And I believe is this team starting nickel right now, uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, I think Eric Rowe is I a good guy. room for him. Like yeah. <laughs> the guys I want to keep, I don't have room. I just, and there's, there's not a guy I want to part ways with on this defense, or at least yeah. I'm willing to. And I, just... I, I, I got to check my numbers because I feel like I'm, I got more than 53 here. But, uh, yeah, I, I didn't touch the safety room either. Um, the same as last time, like you said, Von Bell, Chin, Jamie Robinson, Xavier Woods, and then Sam Franklin, who I think Sam Franklin needs more legitimate playing time in a regular game instead of just the special teams. Uh, he needs to get on, on defense because he's flashing the preseason – 
making interceptions, making pass breakups, really looking like he's a level above the second and third stringers that are out there. So I think Sam Franklin's earned a, earned some opportunity in legitimate game time uh, to play. No, I would agree with that. I think he's he's done well, and he's he's out. He's always made a couple, you know, big plays in games. Even when he has played on defense, when guys have gotten injured, to the point where it's like, damn, you know, he's flashing here and there. So, yeah, I definitely think you know he might be rotated in, and obviously, you know, what you know throughout the season, it's a long year. So I'm sure he's going to see playing time in the, on the defense as well, and not just on special teams. Um, but yeah, that corner room, I could see something if Dante isn't, you know, 100%, they keep row. I don't know, man, that row, that row performance was God awful. I had a hard time with that one and we'll see what he does this week, but that was not good. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it, uh, it wasn't great. Let's go to special teams. I think I think we both agree here. Eddie, Johnny, and Jansen as yeah. the as the three there. I don't think obviously that's not changing. So um, but yeah, I think across the board, I think we had a couple differences. It'll be interesting to see. Do they carry five or six receivers? I know that's been a discussion. Do they keep six? Like, do they that that is something I'm sure they're weighing. Um do they keep nine offense linemen? Do they keep 10? I don't think they keep more than 10. I'd be shocked. Um, the D line, it'll be interesting what shakes out there. That's Stallworth. He has shown some, I believe that Ray as well has shown some flashes. I think he had yeah. a sack this last game. So that's another guy to watch. Anyone, I guess you had a Brandon Smith and Barno, but anyone you think like would just shock the hell out of you. Like, would be blindsided that they would be cut. Um, like that it has a possibility to be cut. Yeah. Enough. Kind of like on the bubble yeah. that you'd be like, but you'd be like, Holy shit. I wasn't expecting that. I guess you kind of made those with Brandon Smith and Barno, at least for me. But, yeah. I, I think those two are probably the biggest. Uh, I think Ian Thomas is a possibility. Ultimately. I think that if they decide to go for another player like Sullivan there, or if they just decide not to keep three tight ends, uh, I think that he, he could be, uh, also, I think, you know, you get into that corner room, maybe Keith Taylor is a is a casualty with Troy Hill addition, maybe Eric Rowe like you had. Uh, yeah, I think that there's some – there are some – and then like I had, of course, Barno and Brandon Smith. Those are two guys that I think – I think Barno's flashing in the preseason. I don't really think Barno's going to get cut, but I had to make that decision quickly uh, based off of my situation yeah. I was in. Uh, but – uh, I, I think that Brandon Smith legitimately, I think, has a chance to be cut because of that uh, Deion Jones addition and just the depth of that linebacking room with Grugier Hill stepping up. And I just, you know, this this coaching staff has no ties to him. He was a high draft pick for the previous coaching staff, but this coaching staff has no ties and he hasn't really shown anything in the preseason. He hasn't shown anything really in his career up to this point. So uh, he, he could be a casualty. Yeah, Barno, I guess I wouldn't be as surprised. Or, I mean, uh, Brandon Smith, I wouldn't be as surprised. This stuff that I've seen. I yeah. do think he has some value on special teams, and that's kind of what's holding me back because I know he's played a lot in yeah. practice and preseason in there. So we'll see there. Barno, I would I would be I would honestly be shocked if I see when if that comes out. Like that like holy shit. <laughs> I wonder I I wouldn't expect that one. Um but yeah, I mean, you could see Brandon Smith cut keeper. I'm just looking at my own sheet here um, from the cuts I made. Um, but I will say this because I want to talk. I want to touch on this because we're kind of getting close to that. And I had I've been tweeting this out every now and then. I pointed this out. I think it was in June, June or July, and then I retweeted it a couple weeks ago. But don't forget about the the late August trades with Scott Fitter. It has happened twice the last two years, and I'm almost – I would be shocked if he doesn't make another one in late August. It usually happens like next week sometime. So just something to keep in mind. Again, I don't think they're going to be trading picks for guys. I don't think they're going to go out and get Jonathan Taylor. I know the guy's a beast. I just don't see that happening. They already paid Miles Sanders. 
don't see them going out. They obviously don't have a first round pick next year and they don't have a second round pick in 2025. So I don't think that's going to happen. And Dan Morgan kind of confirmed that today or alluded to that. I should say not confirmed, but alluded to that, that they're not looking to give up picks. So could they trade a player for, you know, another position? Maybe. Yeah. Um, but Again, just keep that in mind because that date is coming up, and I would not be shocked if they make a move for someone, whether that's on the D-line or on the offensive line or another wide receiver or a corner or whatever the case may be. So something to just monitor as we get closer to those deadlines. And, you know, Dan Morgan mentioned today that they're going to be scouring that waiver wire. They have, you know, ninth priority in that list, top ten for the waiver wire. So I'm sure they're going to nab a couple guys there that might not be on the roster right now. That could be starters, you know, come week two and three or whatever. So just something to monitor, but it's coming quick. It is coming quick. Well, I think that is all for us here tonight on Panthers on tap podcast. You can catch our episodes wherever you get your podcast. Go give us a follow on Twitter at Panthers on tap for all your analysis and breaking news. And as always...